Good morning. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 11th of January, 2023. Another upload to YouTube on the uh, ArcShip technology. Yesterday, I, I did uh, my first upload on how to build the, the, the Scotian camp. And uh, <clears throat> I've been kind of going through the numbers. And so this is an upgrade on the on the size, okay? So what we have here is your micro camp, micro family camp. So this is a, a split trailer design for uh, seven families, six on the outside, then another family in the center. This is going to have to have to redo this work here because it doesn't fit the profile anymore. But yesterday I was saying that that uh, you know from here uh, to here, like this enclosure uh, was a third of an acre, and it's a little bit too tight, so I kind of expanded it. Because what you want to look at, if I go here, expand this down. This is what you're you're looking at as the as the finished product, right? And uh, so these mic micro camps, they make up one sixteenth of the whole. There's different designs, but this is a uh, the more practical design as far as a, a mobile camp. If you're going to set up a mobile mobile camp, <clears throat> you know, with your your gardens and your all your stuff you need for growing and, and for off grid, right? So this could be a rented property. This could be a leased property that that you do the work on it. And what you'd be left with is, uh, is, you know, kind of, you're building kind of like a resort. And the times we're coming into that, uh, uh, because of the hyperinflation that we're going into, that we need to break away from the system and set up these uh, community, community camps uh, separate and apart from the government. Because the government no longer has your best interest in mind, right? There's a separation becoming, coming between church and state. We stay within the the cities. That it's just a matter of time that you will become trapped, and you, that you will have to take the mark of the beast. That's where things are heading. But anyway, getting back to here. That uh, so so I've upgraded from uh, 59, 59.33 feet. So I'm just going to go through the uh, of how to calculate do the calculations. As long as you got a calculator, a good calculator, it's going to work for you. So if you want to find out the area of a half an acre, you take a full acre, 4356 so divide that by 2, and you get uh, 21,780, 21,780 square feet. And if you want to calculate the side length, the, the calculations are fairly easy to make. So if you want to calculate the length from here to here, or here to center, you take your 21,780, divide by 3, you take the square root of that, and you get 85.2 feet. So we're just going to round it off at uh, 80 feet, right? 80 feet across on the side, side length, and 80 feet from the side uh, to the center, so your hypotenuse would be, uh, or your diameter, you times that by two, that gives you 170 foot diameter, right? And your circumference, you multiply that by six, it gives you a circumference of about uh, 512 feet. And that should be enough. It's going to take a little bit of work to, to work out the, the center building here and, uh, I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be yet. Because you're on the split trailer design, your trailers are, and this is a mobile setup, right? And your split trailer designs are 8 foot 6 wide. So that's going to have to be able to plug into the, into the outside here. So your outside would have to be uh, probably 16 feet where it plugs in. And uh, you, want, you want to be able to have space where you could actually have access uh, to the trailer and access 
uh, to the ground, right? So I do have, it won't take that long to put this together. So once I'm done formatting uh, this uh, family unit, then I'll be able, to be able to swap this out. Okay, so we got a half acre here. And to calculate the, the next upgrade, so this is your micro camp. And this here, within this uh, yellow line, this is the macro camp, right? It's actually uh, seven, uh, seven micro, micro camps. You actually have one in the center, right? So to calculate the side length, you take uh, you take your eighty five point two. You multiply that by four, okay? And you get three hundred and forty point eight feet. Now this is all going to be rounded off, right? Three hundred and forty feet from here to here. Now. To, to figure out uh, the overall area, you square that, you square that, you get uh, 116, 144, and you multiply that by 3, you get 348, 433, and you simply divide that by 1 acre, 43560, and you get 7.99, you get 8. Eight acres, so within the, you know, within the this, within this yellow border, it actually works out to eight acres, right? And so from there, I've added an expansion zone uh, buffer. I'm going to pop this up to about ten acres, from eight to ten acres. To, so to do that, I'm taking the eight acres. I'm dividing that by four times five. So, so this is a 20% expansion to give you your, your 10 acres. And uh, so now this within this border here is eight acres. And from here to here, that's another 20% or, or, or a two acre allotment. And uh, what that works out to uh is on this one here on your eight acre plot you're 340 feet to center right 340 feet to center and uh i think it is and uh and on your 10 acre you're 381 uh 381 feet so you got a difference of, of you know approximately 45. It's it's do the calculations here. So our, our overall distance from here to here on the 10 acres is uh, where's my numbers here three. Three eight one point zero five. Yeah, three eighty one. Three eight one. I'm having trouble reading my own work here. Three eight one zero five minus three forty eight two so I guess you a distance here of uh just a little over forty feet from from here to here right so you want to take the hypotenuse of that, so you times that by 0 0.866025. So that's going to give you a side length 
you know, from here uh, to here, about 35 feet, right? And uh, you want to minus 8 feet for your border, that yellow thing there. So that's going to leave you a road allowance of just a little bigger than around 20, 20, 24, 25, 26 feet right here or in this part here. This this dark gray is, is just a border, right? It has, it's not part of the image. <clears throat> so you got, you know, uh, approximately 35 feet to minus 8, and that leaves you about 24 feet here. So that's your uh, access, right? That's your border access that you might use for roads, you might use for gardens, you might use for transferring livestock or, or whatever. <clears throat> so that's your access in and out too, right? When you put this together in, in, into the bigger format. So we have our 10-acre our plot. And now if you put this together into an arc ship, I don't have those designs drawn up. Let's pick out an arc ship here. This one going to work. It's not the same format. Well, try to get something else similar here. Come on. I'm going to have to rebuild this image. Okay, this is going to work. That's what we have. So this is your 10 acre plot, right? So we take that and uh, you, you make a stackable arrangement like this. So you have 10, 20, and 30 acres. And uh, so if you go, if you take the side length here, 381, this equals half this year, right? So you got one, two, three, and this area here, this, you would have 10 acres here and 10 acres there, right? So that's, that's going to give you uh, 10 times, not 4.5, it's going to be 10 times 5. It's going to give you a 50 acre plot. And I uh, actually want to bump that up to 60 acres. So we're going to take 50, divide by, let's divide by 4 times 5, give it a 20% expansion. That's 62.5. Backtrack, and we're going to divide by 3 times 4 for a third expansion. 66.66. Hmm. Number sounds right, but it's <coughs> I don't like six six six. So that this might have to go together into a larger plot. Okay, fifty. I'm not too sure what a. We could take this sixty acre arc ship, and put a, a ten acre expansion around it. I don't have to use that. Uh, a quarter or, or a third and and uh, but you need the expansion and the, the reason for the expansion is uh you know let me think here 
you got 50 acres on the inside and you got another 10 acres on the outside for your for your buffer zone your, your expansion zone and then you actually want to put that together uh, no I don't forgot got, got the next upgrade on here or not okay this will be the the upgrade here so that you would have your have your uh, 10 acres on the inside or, or 10 or 50 acres here on the inside then you want to add, add a 10 acre buffer to give you about 60 acres right so when you put it together this uh, gives you this this kind of pattern and it's been about a year since I've kind of opened up these files. So if you got 60 acres, well, we know that this is the 124 scale, the way it's designed. But if you look at this here, this is equivalent to uh, uh, You get one, two, three, four, five, six. On the outside, on the inside, you would have 12. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this area here would be equal to one ninth. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So we're going to have to take uh, 60 acres, divide by 2. So this here, this, this triangle here, will be equal to a, a 30 acre plot. So you take 30 times 18, 540 acres. That's good. Uh, that even uh, gives room for another expansion because you want to, you want to be able to fit something like this on a on a full section of land, right? <clears throat> so your areas out here, this would be your 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 fields uh, area in here. This would be your, your, your gardens and, and things like that. Uh, lots of room for livestock. And you're able, you know, if you got you know, if you got cattle here, if this is a grazing area, and if you wanted to shift uh, shift cattle around, that you can do it. And that's why you would actually put another expansion zone around this, so you can move your cattle uh, from the outside to, to, to different plots. So we're going to go back here. Like I was saying, it's been a, over a year. Since I've been messing with this stuff. This is just another example, right? You don't have to have the full concept model. You got to have uh, uh, half uh, living, then you could actually have garden areas. It, it, it just depends. So, whatever your land layout is, you make your, your design accordingly. We'll get back to here again. I think was this this the one? I mean, you can build towns, villages, cities. This is the one that we had here. I think this is kind of cool. You know, you got your uh, eight acres from the inside. It gives you more room here to kind of play around. It's not tight. It's not too small. It's not too big. Right? And the center is going to be kind of funky. And so this would be your 
your your center complex here. This might be a, a geodesic dome this size, right? So these are your different uh, uh, <clears throat> buildings on the outside, uh, you know, for trade and barter. You want you want to be able to set that up. Lots of funky space for gardens. You got other buildings here. These could be you know, greenhouses. These here could be, you know, barn units for for cattle. And the reason I've uh, opted to use uh, this isometric geometric construct as opposed to the square is that it's much more functional. You know, uh, using a square, every single dimension has to be pretty well measured, right? But if you do just this one angle here, if you knew the dimensions of this, you could figure out what this is here, right? And so if you, all you have to know, know is, uh, is just, you know, the, the length of the side. And from that, you could figure out all these measurements in here, just from this one measurement. That's the beauty about using the isometric uh, uh, geometry, right? And that you could teach anybody. And uh, it's going to be a little more difficult when you lay it out. You would have to train crews, right? So if you're in the center, if you're setting up your survey, you would set up your transit here. And you look, you know, the first thing that you would do is to, to establish your the various points going on, going outward. And so on this one, this one here, you start from the center. And you start with your outer measurement. You start with, you know, this would be whatever this is. And this is 381 feet. And then you you plot the center here. And uh, you probably plot this one. You probably plot this one on this one. And and uh, you basically just need to uh, reference your hexagonals. If you look at it, you know you got one big hexagonal, right? Then you would have another hexagonal here that makes up your your road allowance. You'd have another one in here within the the white there, then you have another one in here, and another one in the center. And, and, and so on. So if you got a crew here, uh, I would have to draw this up, take something like this to to make your, to designate your different points. So you just have to, you know, put a, a, a dot there, 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 and a dot there. And you have that going all the way out. And all you have to do is mark these off and and uh and rope it off. That's it. You're you're ready to you know once you got your, your micro uh camps laid out, you de designated, right? And then you can actually start uh bringing in your road equipment to start uh, making access and also clearing these plots. So uh the my vision is to be able to build one of these camps within a 120-day uh, period. That's that's complete. This would be, be for mobile camp. So if, if you're going to start this from scratch, that you want to set up your... Uh, you need your crews, right? You need you need your crews. That's very important. That's what the where these mobile camps came from. You need your crews. So in the center... You would actually have building facilities here that that you could use to uh, make the rest of the camp, right? So you can have a live on uh, live on work site. That's what's going to be needed, right? Because you want to be able to have everything on place. So you're, you're going to need uh, you know crews for doing the fencing. You're going to need crews for doing the uh, clearing the land, for for making the roads, for making all the the, the different uh, building components. So you're going to have a lot of people working together. You know, you know, at least several hundred people on on staff, live, living on site. The times you're coming into, it's going to have to you know be this way. 
we're going to have a very small window of time in, in which to uh, relocate out of the out of the cities into the country. All right, I'm just going to leave it here. I don't want to bore you guys too much. And uh, you get back to me there, Brandon. You know, it's one thing that question that you did, you did ask me, Brandon, why the Star of David? A lot of people are, I wouldn't say all, but some people are kind of petrified about the Star of David. That's, uh, you know, that's used in, uh, uh, you have to remember, it's a five-pointed star that's used for the goat head, goat's head, right? And the six-pointed star, it's, uh, I wish they kept the, kept the, uh, the data that I came across, but and and the way that the heaven is laid out just before the justice building, as you walk into the justice building to the left and to the right of the path, is a uh, are two gardens in the in the shape of the Star of David, where the the, the twelve trees are right, and and uh, well, you have to remember that Satan copies what God does and perverts it. You know, Satan does not have the ability to create, but he does have the ability to pervert the work of God. And and uh, the Star of David was actually the, the original concept that the Lord gave me back in the summer of 1987 when I first drew it up on the wall, right? And that was a, a large format, uh, I think, the uh, center to point, I think that was 5,000 and nine feet. So if I square that uh, times three and divide by four, three, five, six, so oh, that was uh, about a section and a half of land layout, right? But it allows you to, uh, to have uh, 12 uh, camps around you could actually have uh, 12 arc ships you know, within that sec section or section and a half of land and and uh, so on a section of land it should be possible to, to establish a uh, community uh, between 3,000 to 5,000 people you need the land to grow food you need the land for cattle you can't just put everybody in, into a real tight mess, it's not going to work out. And uh, you need you need it takes lots of land to, to to feed the people. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I know what the Lord gave me is is from the hand of God. And uh, when I, I just like to add when I when the Lord opened up a door to move down down to Benton, Missouri to to build a house for a family there. They had meetings and church meetings in, in Bernie, Missouri. This is back in '92, around there. I met a lady by the name of, name of uh, Judith Freed, and she's an intercessor. And uh, at the time, I was wasn't doing this in the computer. I was actually drawing all this stuff up by hand, right? And I showed her the uh, the work. This is about five years after the uh, <clears throat> the Lord. Uh, brought me into the 1988 open visions of the destruction of the West Coast, and I, I showed her the uh, the the plans I've been working on for for five years. And using the same concept as this, all hand drawn out, and she said that they they were identical to the these uh, refuge places that she saw in the heavenlies. They were the plans were identical. And, and so they're already up there above the earth waiting to come down. So God has a plan to preserve his people. But it's going to take a, uh, take a, a way to be able to fast track the work. The work's going to have to be fast tracked. And uh, about 40 days to uh, uh, kind of get the, get the roots of the ground. And about 120 days to bring uh, these arch, arch ship or Goshen camps into into fruition. So if you had, you know, the, and, the, and the beauty about it is that even in this, this small 10-acre plot, and it wouldn't take long, about 
40 days with earth moving equipment and all that, you would have your fences in, you would have your roads in, and and uh, all your, your plots would be prepared. You know exactly what you're working with, right? And so after 40 days, you're, you're initially settled, and uh, then that's where your work begins. That's where you you come, you know, about 40 days to, to work on the land, <clears throat> to get it ready, to get the infrastructure in place. Then after that, uh, you'd have, you know, several months to get everything else built and, and, and put into place. And uh, there's something you're going to have to do while the weather is conducive to work, right? That you're, you're really going to have to press in. And I don't know how much time, but, you know, if one of these uh, Goshen camps were made, it wouldn't take long before it would it would travel. You know, it, it's going to gain a lot of momentum. And and so it's just, just a matter of being able to uh, train the crews. You know, you'd have to be able to train the crews to know exactly the, the manpower and the labor that's going to take to build one of these camps. And that's... It can be projected, and and uh, but you can only do so much on paper. So when it comes time to actually building these camps, you know, you know it's going to take about a, about a week for a crew of seven to actually do the survey. And once you do your survey, then the then you can actually uh, start marking out your micro camps, right? And uh, you mark out your micro camps. And you mark in your road, your road access, then you can, then you can start work on that. And because you have, because you're going to have a lot of transports coming in and out, you're going to have, you know, it's, it's going to take uh, a lot of material to build something like this. As far as the cost, I don't know what the cost would be, you know, 10 million, uh, 10 million dollars or something, something like that, which is nothing when you, you know, we're a house in the city. You're paying a million dollars for a piece of junk, you know. And so people that are in the cities, that they will uh, give up their lands and, and positions, lands and possessions and all that, in order to raise up the uh, financing that it's going to take to, to make these camps. You won't survive in the city. If you stay in the city, at some point or another, you either either become trapped in destruction or, or you will be uh, forced to take the mark in order to to be remain in the city. That's where it's coming to. And if you're not separated uh, into an off-grid uh, system, you will come under the, the beast control. That's, that's all there is to it. And uh, you lose your freedom and you lose your salvation. Anyway, going to leave it here. Don't want to drag this on. I'm going to sign off here. God bless you.